you're about to listen to is brought to you by Kingdom Message Interdenominational Ministry. But the Lord incline your heart to His Word as you listen. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you we appreciate you for the opportunity. We thank you for this privilege that you have given to us. Father, we are praying that the Holy Spirit will help us in this meeting. In the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will open the heart of these young ones and you will minister yourself to them in Jesus' name. Thank you for what they have listened to. We pray, Lord, that as we continue, you will continue to shower your blessing upon us by the virtue of your world in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I think I will consider everyone sitting fortunate because all the testimony that my husband was saying and together with what brother was saying, but it is a product of teachings like this and uh, for those who groom us that time they so much understand this aspect and they really impact our lives and several of us that we grew together at that time we have a wonderful marriage so i trust god for your life that as you have seated that you want to listen to him again i pray that the lord will also help you because Many, many things is happening today that several people married, but in that marriage, they are living as if they are living in air. All because of all of these little omissions in their lives. But thank God for the fact that you are here. So bless God that you are here. And before I will move straight to move to my own uh, beats that the one they gave me. You know, the first speaker talk about the will of God, that is the very important thing, because without the will of God, we cannot be talking about maintaining a godly uh, relationship or courtship. And uh, why we are fine, we find ourselves in this uh, situation now, generally in the nation and in our society, in our various home and community, is as a result of there are issues, there are foundational issues about the relationship. That's why we are experiencing a lot of issues like this that are not palatable. Then, you know, he spoke about the will of God, that the marriage starts with the will of God, not your own very will. Recently, we, there, there is one issue that gets us talking to make us to flash back my husband and myself. Then, we were together in a particular fellowship then. So, among, in the day, the, the day I went to his father, spiritual father, because after you receive yourself, when you people have agreed, you go and meet your, the spiritual parent. He will take me to his own spiritual parent. I will take him to my own spiritual parent. So, I see, what I told him recently, I see I, I told them. I look at it, I say, even among then though, I, I was just sincere and rather, even among all of those br uh, brothers that are around here, I said, the only person that can marry is him. Do you know why? It's not because that he's handsome. God just make it like so, but as in, not even a desire of the flesh now. Do you understand? I, I hope you will not misunderstand me. Uh -huh. But I look at it because what I'm looking for, it is not uh, this physical thing that we normally look for. I am looking for someone that loves God sincerely. And I realize that 
among all of them, I can perceive that he loves God sincerely. And there are other things physically that I don't like about him. I told him he was loving that day. You know, you people that love uh, brother that will go back, that put, you know, at times when my man talking, he shared, I would I will say, ah, this is that. So all of those things, I don't like it. Do you understand? Like, you people will not like it. Like, he has told you that he does not even like it when God was telling him about me. So, such as this, you don't need to like it, but you will definitely like it when you enter into it because you will find out that God has given you a wonderful gift. The Bible says, whoever that finds a wife, he said he has obtained favor from the Lord. So, if God has actually shown you someone, you have actually obtained favor from the lord so may the lord help us whatever god gives to you is good for you praise god can i hear you is good for you because god is the only one that can ascertain who and who that is good and let god introduce someone to you don't introduce yourself to someone because only god knows a man praise the lord May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Now, uh, the topic that I was given to is maintaining a godly purity in the Christian courtship. And uh, that particular topic, there are several things or two or three words that we need to define there. Talking about the courtship, courtship is just after you have a uh, Receive yourself, you come together, you go to your spiritual parents and they agree to it. Then you publicly make a declaration that I am engaged with sister so so. I am engaged with brother so so. So, eh? It's not dating. Praise the Lord. Dating is just guessing. You are just watching this one whether this one will be compatible with me. Do you understand? And that is not the way of the God, of the Lord, though. It's a way of the world. They just import that idea to Christianity. That is not it. Go, you are not doing uh, you are not doing trial and error. When God speaks, God is not an author of confusion. He speaks straight to you. It's not that he wants you to come and try this one. Whether it's someone that you can spend the rest of your life with, that is not the way of God. If anybody is telling you that, it's a deception from the pit of hell. So don't let us succumb to that. There is nothing like dating in Christianity or in Christendom. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, like we always do here too, especially in our co laborer meeting, when you see a brother and sister that they newly engaged, they will announce publicly that this brother and sister they are already in courtship so there will be a public announcement about that one so that this one will not go and be thinking about this one when that one is no longer available again because of the carnality of their heart may the lord help us in jesus name that is what courtship is all about then the issue of uh, purity you know there was an adjective that was behind this uh, godly purity is not a mistake because in the world some people thought that when you have agreed to marry someone she be is your wife they will tell you you can sleep together you can do some things together you can some funny funny things that can be done together that is the way of the world and they don't see it to be anything they will only tell you that she be that is the person you want to marry if you travel together and they want to give you a separate room they said, no, no, they will not even give you. They will put it together because they have believed that they are husband and wife. That is the way of the world. Praise God. So, Godly there is as is symbolic. That is, to the people of the world, they are not considered that thing that I just described to be anything. They see it, they see it as a normal thing. But to us, it's not a normal thing. Praise God. So purity is from the world pure. Praise God. And do you know that in our experience, 
when we begin to, when we are counseling people, we have found out some things perhaps that will make me to speak in this regard. That people limit, there is a way they have limited purity to fragility. Do you understand? Do you get me right? They have limited purity to fragility. Praise God. So uh, we have to speak in that regard so that we will understand. So maintaining. You know, the, <laughs> every aspect of marriage can actually, if it is not properly guided, can give devil an opportunity to enter into your life and do all sorts of havoc with your life. If you engage, devil can use that avenue if you don't know how to go about it. And you will get yourself involved in several things that you can even never think of you getting involved in. So may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. There is difference between purity and fragility. Even though being a virgin, virgin is part of what we are talking about, but notwithstanding, that is not all about it. Praise God. And if you want to maintain purity during your courtship, then you must be a type that have regard for the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalm first, chapter 119, verse 9, it says, how can a young man make his way pure before the Lord? Is by eating the word of God in his heart. I will still speak much more later about that. But if you are looking forward to a relationship that will glorify Jesus, that will be pure, then you must be the type that holds the word of God in high esteem. What do I mean? You know, there are a lot of it does not matter. There are people that will tell you that, just sit down there. What do you think they do when they are doing their own costume? It is not like that, Joe. They are trying to make light of the word of God so that you can allow compromise in your own relationship. Praise God. So, you, it's a period that you need to trust God and to understand what that period is all for. When you don't understand the meaning of courtship or what is all about, what courtship is all about, then abuse is inevitable. I will briefly digress. You know, courtship period is a courtship whereby you and your wife to be or your husband to be a time to pray, a time to understand the mind of God as per your union that is about to take place. What is God? What is the mind of God? What did God want to use to achieve through your union? Not a time to do all sorts of paparazzis that we normally get engaged in. But it's a time to actually seek the face of God, to iron some things out. There are several people that are engaged together that they are not members of the same congregation or denomination. That they have a different belief, that they need to align their belief system. Do you understand? Someone is coming from one denomination, another one is coming from this denomination. They had different doctrinal issues and belief that needed to be resolved with the word of God, not with doctrine now. Such are the issues that courtship was meant for. Meant to seek the face of God on what God wants to achieve through your marriage. As a woman, God has been whispering to you and you have come to it that you need to help this man. In what area that you need to help him? You need to know and agree to God's term. And when it's becoming difficult for you, it's a time to pray that God will help you. Praise the Lord. So such are the little accumulation now about what courtship is all about. Time to discuss on, okay, how are we going to live our life, pray through, know the will of God on many things, the number of children the Lord wants you to have, all of those. But unfortunately, we use it to do a lot of, uh, you do picture here, you go there, you do like that, you waste it away. Praise God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 
Now, I want us to go to the book of uh, First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter six. You can read from uh, verse eighteen or nineteen. Nineteen says, "What? What?" Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and we are not your home, and ye are not your home, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that you, as a single lady, as a single man, as a, as a young man, that you are not on your own. And this, your body belongs to who? Belongs to God. In that said, therefore, what? Glorify God with your bodies. I want you to underline that word. He said, therefore, glorify God with your bodies. The Bible says you are the temple of God. Christ owns that your body. is the habitant of Christ. We are Christ's dwell. We are the spirit of the Lord dwells. And this body, we must use it to glorify the name of the Lord. You know, in courtship, your relationship began. You begin a relationship. And there is going to be closeness. You will be talking together discussing matters together and that time is a time that devil can take advantage of you if you are not careful and it's going to wreck a folk some people on that altar devil took advantage of them and the moment devil take advantage of them they are prone to so many things because when you allow sin in your life, you are prone to devil's attack. Devil can enter, he can go in and out of your life. And so many people, they keep it secret when some things happened. Praise the Lord. But we are now looking at how as a young man, as a young lady, especially in this age, that on your phone like this, you can do several things. Praise God. You can do a lot of things. You can watch a lot of things. You can all sorts of things you can do. But one of the things, one of the very first things that you need to know and that, need to, that you just have to take the way it is, is that word of God. One of the things that can help you is that you have regard for the word of God. When you have regard with the word of God, then there is a fear of God in your heart. Like Joseph said in his heart, he said, how can I do this and sin against God? You are not talking about yourself. The self that you are talking about does not belong to you. That was the understanding Joseph had. He is not ready to be defending himself. He was not ready at the moment. But what was ringing in his brain is that, how can I do this and sin against God? But the issue is that if you have been company with wrong people, they might be believers, but they make light of the word of God that it does not matter. And that will be me. You, you, you might not know that gradually that thing is doing something to you. When they are telling you something, they will say, if the brother just uh, kiss you, there is no problem. If you hold you like this, if you hold you family, it does not matter that you have not seen. They begin to say all sorts of things to you, and you are taking it. You know, little by little, they are weak. That, those things that you are accepting will be weakening you, and you begin to make light of the word of God. Gradually, gradually, devil will be weakening you in that manner. 
And before you know, you begin to get yourself involved in some unimaginable things. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So if you are going to maintain a godly, a pure, a, 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 a purity, a, a relationship that is pure, you must let the word of God dwell in you richly. Like the other preacher said, that you must hold that word of God in your heart. That this is the word of God. This is what God says concerning me. And the Holy Spirit will be there to help you. But when you have looked at it and say, this does not matter. Like you want to think, you know the way the people of the world keep relationship. They can sleep together when they get to a place. They can be in an hotel room together if they have course to go to somewhere. They can do, in fact, they can bath together. Praise God. They will say that Shebi is the, is the person that I want to marry. Isn't it? You are looking at him and see those things are strange to you. They are not strange, yo. They are things that some of you, you are getting involved in. But the word of God is not meant to condemn you. It's to help you to amend your ways. Praise God. Because you might not even really the, 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 uh, the kind of preaching that you are listening to have made you to understand that all of those things does not matter. And that has weakened you already. But the Lord is coming to you again that that is not that kind of relationship that I am interested in. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I want us to quickly go to the book of Second Samuel, chapter 13. There is a, a, a pathetic story there. Even though it's not a story of the engaged, but there are lessons to be learned in that particular place. Someone should read if you are there. Second Samuel chapter 13 from verse 1. I know that we have heard this, the, the, the story, and it's a very pathetic story. And I want to tell us you might be there, you are not engaged, but you are a young lady. You know, nowadays, young ladies, they are vulnerable to so many things. The married men, they are after them. The young men, they are after them. And you could imagine. The half-sister, this one is saying, I must say, he love. It's a lust. It's not love. Those things that you people call love, they are not love, oh. Is a pure lust. Praise the Lord. And you know the foolishness of this young lady. She's innocent but careless. She's innocent but foolish. And there are people that are foolish like that. I heard the story of a young uh, lady like that. All these butty children. And uh, there was an argument that she was telling someone that she's a virgin. virgin. And that, man, that person is saying, no, you are not. This and that. He said, okay, let me, let me check if... Uh, so in an attempt to prove for the man <laughs> that she is a virgin, the man is virgin, the girl. You know, it's a silly thing. There are several silly, silly things that you two you are getting yourself involved in. In the name of, it's a normal thing that there is nothing wrong about it. See this young girl, very beautiful. And this half-brother was lost in after her. You know, some of you, she started dialoguing with the devil when she ought to flee. Eh? She still have opportunity. Someone sends you an error. Listen to me, oh. And uh, she sends you an error, go and buy something for me. He said, you brought it. You now, the man entered the room before you arrive. Her. He said, go, 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 you have come, oh. He said, yes, come. Ah, this is the bread. He said, come. Come inside. I'm inside. Oh, you are foolish if you enter into inside with that man. Because why won't he wait for you there to collect the bread? He just wants to trap you. They are useless men like that. Don't let them useless your life. You know, after this, uh, I'm a useless, this girl, we never heard about that girl in the Bible again. That was where the story ended. They close that destiny. Some men, they are destiny closer. That once they meet you and bastardize your life, 
they will waste your destiny away. May you not meet with such men in the name of Jesus. May you not be a prey to them. May you not make yourself available for such men. And so, this younger, the brother was requiring, and after he make the cake, the rest, he said he will not eat, send everybody away. <laughs> let, only, let it remain only, only you and I. You know, and something is not suggesting to you that something is wrong somewhere. There is an issue. You know, I said the other time, the company of people, or who you listen to, let me, let me talk that way. Those messages, your mentor on TV, the people that you hold your teaching in high esteem, people who are twisting the word of God, you can never have a pure courtship. If those are the people that you are following, you know, this man was full of loss in his heart. And at a time, there was a play that said, Did that his friend observe that the, the, the young man was getting lay? lay. Eh? That is what lust can do to a man. Any young man that indulge in such. It, what we see them doing that, you will just see them changing naturally when they are so engrossed in that nonsense. And this evil friend observed that this man is something is wrong with him. He asked, him, He said, What is your problem? Oh, he said, It is this. I am in love with, with this, his half sister. And you know, the friend cannot tell him that this abomination is an evil thing that you want to do. There are some people that when you say that this is what is going on with you, they say nothing bad in it. If you are joining with that kind of people, they may be Christian, but they have lost their own consecration. And they will make light of all of those things and say it does not matter. You cannot go through this courtship period without being sustained injury. Praise the Lord. And this man, I say, ah, if it is that one, it's a small thing. He said, you just pretend as if you are sick, this and that. And he taught him the evil. And like your generation has been taught evil now. You ask me, what are the evil that they have taught you? If you ask young people that if you, 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 you are aware that they are in a relationship, they come to you and you start engaging them in talking. And that's okay. Are you see, keep yourself pure, this and that. They will say yes. So if you see that lady, she will answer very quickly that I'm still a virgin. And you are wrong, you have wrong courtship for four years, five years, eight years, and you are still on it, you have not gotten married. And when you ask them, they say I'm a virgin. But only to now probe them further. That have you been touching yourself? They will say yes. Have you seen the nakedness of yourself? They will say yes. Have you uh, uh, romance together? They say yes. Have you been sleeping together? Yes. Do you understand? And they are still virgin. Praise God. Is that so? Eh? You know, initially I said that I don't want to limit purity to fragility. Because there are a divination that we have given ourselves now that is not Jesus' divination. Praise God. You have not married someone. The only thing that you have not done is that you have not done is action. But all other things that a, a, the husband and wife can do, you have done it. Then you are deceiving yourself. Praise the Lord. It's a deception to the highest order. And yet, when they say, how many people that men has not slept with them before they marry? You will be the number one to raise up. You are, you are deceiving yourself. You will not be rating yourself as someone that is holy and you will you be looking down on all other ones and say this and that and that and that. But in the sight of God, you are not. That's what they call devourment. You have devoured yourself. But because you have not done the rating, every other thing you have done it. Some will even do some nonsense, which I can't say because of these young children that are here. And they will still be saying that they are still virgin. It is not, it, that relationship is not pure any longer. 
So you, there, there is a means they have devised for themselves. Maybe it is when he did it, they will say that I have been disfaging. But when he's not going to, and therefore he's deceiving them. And they are even, there are people that are even teaching them so. There can be temptation. That is not what we are saying. It's not that you cannot be tempted. But not that after you have been tempted, maybe you enter into it and you are still glory, uh, you are still uh, rejoicing in it. Praise the Lord. You are not feeling bad that you have done something wrong because you have not done the right thing. What is that you mean? Someone should open to the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Then we will see the definition of purity of Jesus. You will know that even you that you are claiming that you are pure, that you are not pure. Lord, he said when you look at a woman lustfully, or you look at a young man lawfully. Job says in the Job chapter 31, verse 1, he said, I have made covenant with my eyes not to look at any woman lustfully. And he, the, the, I think NLT first one says that I have not used my eyes to undress a young lady. That was the way the one of the fashion of the Bible put it. That Job said he has not used that is you look at someone you imagine how that person is going to look like you have used your eyes to undress either a man or a woman. Praise the Lord. So the purity is not about all of those. As long as you are going to engage in all of those and you are still saying you are pure. He said, the steps of Jesus said that when you, in your heart, purity has to do with art also, not the act alone. So when in your heart, you are lost in, then and you are still claiming that you are pure. That's not right. Some of you deliberately tempt yourself. It is not the devil. At times. You deliberately, there are some things that when two people, when you are engaged together, the Bible talk about flee. Fornication is a sin that you need to flee. It's not a sin that you, that don't worry, I am in control. No. You know that, uh, Tama now, the brother pretend to be unarmful. Some men, they want to destroy young lady and they will pretend that she they see you as a daughter. They will be telling you that you are my daughter. You are my daughter and they are trying to put their, their hand on your breast. Did the, the, the father will put hand on the breast of a, a, a daughter? Eh? And he's saying he's a father, he's a father. He's trying to, to pull your, your clothes. And you are not running for such man that is telling you that he's a father. You will soon be devoured, as in devourment will soon take place. Praise God. Such as what Tamar did not do. When those things was growing gradually, from one step to the other, come and cook for me. After cooking, uh, let every man or excuse them, let it remain, carry the food to the room. Having put the food in the room, she saying that, will you sleep with me? She did not pick grace. Eh? She was dialoguing that, eh, if you talk to the king, eh, the king will give you to, ah, praise the Lord. You did not pick this and go. Praise God. So it's really a foolishness. She did not know. She was just acting foolishly. As a Christian, your antenna must be very sharp. Praise God. In order to know, you know, we are talking about live in the spirit. It can be someone that you engage with. That we are, we are talking about courtship now. That you have engaged with him. But God is telling you, so you are carrying your bag and go. You are together. And you are discussing together. Hmm. And at times, you know, at times, emotion. Emotion can take someone over. When discussion is going on. And you notice it. And you are still staying there. God is telling you that, oh, you are carrying your bag and go. You are saying what you are discussing is very important. You're on your own. 
you must be a man of the spirit also to maintain a, a pure relationship. When the Holy Ghost will say, don't go to that appointment, you cannot meet today. You are saying there is a, a very important thing that we need to meet, to do. And against the warning of the Holy Ghost, then you will soon enter into, into ditch. Praise God. So it's something that Holy Spirit must be active in your relationship for you to maintain a pure relationship. We are saying the other time that, talking about four years, this and that relationship. I want to say to you, even though our relationship is four years or we did the courtship of four years, it's not good that you should have a long courtship. The very first two years of our courtship, we don't have opportunity to really meet physically, so to say like that. Then we were waiting for ISYC. It was a, uh, it was uh, in Ibadan. Perhaps, eh? Eh, sorry. <laughs> Praise the <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Don't mind me, yo. <laughs> so, if we were waiting, so we have, uh, we were at distance to ourselves. But we don't encourage love courtship. You know, some people, then, even if we, we want to go by the will of the flesh, maybe in the end of days, because we did end it together, we could have engaged that time. But those people that were talking to him, push him to that as soon as we depart here, there might not be opportunity to see again, this and that. But he just told them that if this matter is of the Lord, it's going to stand. Don't let anything push you to anything. He now said that, what did he want to do with marriage now? When, after the ending, you are still going to, uh, to, to do IT one year, if you want to return to, to do H and you will do another two years, you will save. That's four years. So, what there are relationships that is not needful now. Because there is nothing that you want to do with the marriage now. And you just put yourself in unnecessary stress, struggle, emotional struggle. Because you'll be following yourself around. You engage while you are in ND1. You are still going to ND2. You are still going to go for IT. You are still going to do HND. You are going to do service. What do you want to do with it? Except maybe the Lord is giving you an express instruction to do so. Except that maybe you, you will not go need to go for HND before you get married. The man you want to marry with is ready. Such occasion might warrant that. But if there is no such occasion, you will just put yourself in unnecessary trouble that you are not counting one year, two year, three year, four year, five years. Then you have already put yourself in trouble. Praise God. So there are things that are not necessary. When there is no, you know that you still have a long way to go. What do you want to do with a long courtship that will put you into unnecessary emotional trouble? Praise the Lord. So avoid it. The, the, your husband is not running anywhere except it's not God. Your wife is not running anywhere, except it's not God. If it is all about him, he knows how to, to keep them. He knows how to preserve him or her for you. Because is the Genesis is the author, is everything, is the beginning and the end of everything. All of those things, if you if you engage in such, you will find it very difficult to actually run through your courtship in such a way that you will glorify God. Where we read the other time, he said you own, your body does not belong to you, that you should glorify God with your body. And what is it when, what is it that you want to look for after, before you get married to someone, the person has already, is, he has undressed you physically, he has touched every part of you physically, you have exposed yourself, you have been exposed to it. You know the evil that is going on here now again, presently, is that 
when it's common in the world, but I know that it's even in, in, in Christendom, it's, it's within also. They will be sending the uh, nude picture to themselves. It's a very dirty and silly thing, abominable and indecent thing that you, as a young lady, you are sending your nude picture to someone. What do you want to see again? One of those things that make us eager those days that, okay, oh, finally, finally, you will be able to know your partner. You will be able to open to him. Emotionally, you will be naked. Every aspect will be naked to the man or to the woman. But now that you have sent everything that he wanted to see to him, what else? Why won't you do courtship of 10 years? Because all what you want to see, you have already seen it finish. Praise the Lord. So it's, 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 it's an abominable thing that not not to be mentioned among the people of Christ. Do you want to tell me that someone that is doing like that is using his body to glorify God? No, absolutely no. Some moralists will not even do that. They don't need to be a Christian. They have taught them how to be decent. And they are not ready to mess up. So how much more you that you say you carry Holy Ghost inside of you. And your Holy Ghost that is inside of you is making you to send your new picture. Because it's someone that you want to get married with. It just let me know how it look like. How is your this thing look like? How is your this thing is doing this? And say, hey, there is no, say, you know, there is nothing wrong. I should be, I'm the one that will marry you. That is the way of the people of the world. He is the one to marry, but he has not married you. Has he married you? No. Let him marry you first. You are doing an abominable thing, thing that does not make the body of Christ to be, to, to be glorified. And when you ask such people, are you a virgin? They will say, yes. You are deceiving yourself. That's why I, I don't want to go in that arena. Some people in the land of Israel, they hold that thing in a, in a high esteem. That is a shameful thing for a young lady to be devoured when he has not married. And that was why the sermon that that young lady was preaching. When you ought to flee as a young lady, you are preaching a sermon, they will soon bring, bring you down. She ought to run for her dear life, but she was preaching to the devil. Someone that the devil has already taken over. Someone that the only thing that I want to know as at that time is to have sexual intercourse with, with her. And she was preaching. Some ladies are foolish also. When they ought to run for a man who is set to destroy their lives, they are already saying that, don't you know that I am a born again? Eh, I can't, we, we don't do such things. Well, before you open your eyes and close it, he has already destroyed what he wants to destroy. Praise the Lord. So that is not the time to preach sermon. It's a time to, to, to run for your life. Escape for your life. So, when you now engage in all of those things, and you are still claiming that you are holy, you are pure, you are this, it's a deception. But God can actually help us when we follow him, when we are not going to go in our own way. God can make you to be sensitive to danger. I remember during our days, then there wasn't phone. We only communicate through letters. So there was a time my husband came on a visit to where I served. He came sometimes. I wasn't around. He came to do some business around where I was serving then. So he went away. I came back. They told me we went for either program in NCCL. So this time around, he came. And I was around. So I have a sister too. We live in Copper's Lodge. So there is a sister I was staying with before that we were coupled together, staying in the same room. But when those batch, uh, whatever they, they went, I had, I had my own room. So when he came, I, I vacated my room to the other room. 
But maybe the second day or the third day that I came, we have men in our couple's door too. That sister that I was staying with, that we were staying together, she's one of the NCCF school. She needed to now go for meeting in NCCF uh, house. Then some couple who are made too, some of them, they also, particularly that my sister will not be around. That's how my husband say my <laughs> that he's going, that he's not going to stay. We the dad, my sister say, ah, no problem. He said no. That he, he, he was sensing that how can he when that sister who will be a check will no longer be there again. That's how he carried his bag and he went back to where he was surfing. It was painful to me that day. Some copper was uh, making jest of me. Some uh, all these are our only coppers that me. They were like, ah, Jumoke. They were just making jest of me. And honestly, to me, when he was saying, I was like, okay, oh, I wasn't too pleased with it, but he particularly was sensing that <laughs> if I stay here, there's going to be trouble. And that's why he went away. So, when you are sensitive in your courtship, when you are sensitive to the Holy Ghost and you are not ready to give in to what your body is telling you, then you will be able to run through that period without any problem. Praise the Lord. So, in Israel, it depends on the value you place on all of those things. So, you know, at times you can be listening to a message or know what the word of God says concerning something. <laughs> and they are saying it does not matter. Praise the Lord. So it does not matter, it does not matter. And you, you are accepting it doesn't matter. Then definitely you will soon fall for that. Because in your heart, you have not seen that this body is not yours. And you need to glorify God with your own body. And these are part of the way that your body, you can use your body to glorify God. Praise the Lord. Joseph was a man that was espoused to Mary. And you know, that thing is very important in the land of Israel, though, that they don't joke with it. When Joseph discovered that Mary is with a child, that is, is pregnant now, she wants to privately set himself aside from the woman because he knows that it's a disgrace for a young lady to be pregnant when he has not gotten married, when he has not married to a man. So Joseph discovered that and he want to until God now appear to him that don't do so. I'm telling also that you will know that all of those these things in those days also they follow this thing that we are talking about now. In fact among guests now when you happen to stay in the hostel they will be asking themselves that if you know a man if you say you have not known a man they will be making jest of you. They will be telling you that there is a disease that is attached to it, that if you do it late, they will look at you as if you are hard in the society. They will look at you and say, you, you don't know anything. And they will start saying all sorts of nasty things that will make that want to be discouraged of being virgin. Praise the Lord. So they are no longer seeing it as a big deal. They even consider it as something that is an abomination, that when a young lady that is about Maybe getting to 20, he has not known a man. They look at it as if this one, he doesn't see where well, that is not, is not well exposed. Praise God. They see it as a thing of exposure. That is what devil made them to see it now. But that is not the way it is. That's why the Bible say, he said, we were bought with a price. Christ paid. For your body. He says, so glorify God with the body which belongs to the Lord. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Because of my time, you know, I made mention of something the other time that you should be very careful of those who company with. Ammon became fitting and destroyed because of the kind of friend that he, he was moving with. 
it was the friend that gave him advice of what to do in order to execute the lust of his heart. It's a loss. It's not love. It's not immediately. The Bible says the kind of hatred that man had for that young lady was much more than the love that he claimed that he loved her. Tell me that it is not love in the first instance. It's loss. So avoid all of those things. Situation, you know, purity is also has to do with what you say. There are things that you say that trigger your emotion in your courtship. When you begin to see all sorts of things that will trigger your emotion, you will definitely do what you don't imagine that you can do. So your your own your mouth must be purified too. That is, say things that will be head divine, not things that will make the emotion of the other partner to be to 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 to, to rise. Praise God. You and you see have that feeling. Even when you are born again, you see how sexual urge. That is it. The only thing is that as a child of God, you have control over it. It's not that you are not moved, you are moved, but only ghost is within you, helping you. So don't use your mouth to say what will make you to be arose unnecessarily. Praise the Lord. So the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Purity has to do with what to hear, what to see, and what to say. There are a lot of preachers that have damaged the life of young ladies. They have told them all sorts of things that is a normal thing. And it's an abnormal thing. How would they say something that are not normal is normal? And because that is what's sitting in our flesh, and we are ready to go with them. Because what they are saying sweet our own flesh. But those who is telling you what is the reality of what God desires, you are not ready for it because that does not suit your own flesh. Their own thing fits into the lust of your own, own self. So if you are to run through a, a relationship in a manner that will glorify God, you have to take heed to what you listen to. What you listen to, what you hear, the kind of people you journey with. They are the things that will help you in order to maintain and much more to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When you need to go and you need not to go, no matter how important what you want to do may be, as long as Holy Ghost is not within you, you know that Holy Ghost is not say yes, yes, to where you are going, to the appointment that you need to keep between yourself. And as long as you're not saying yeah, you just have to back out. If you don't, you go there and you bite your finger. May it may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. So the Lord is interested in our testimonies. Praise God. He, 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 we can't help ourselves, but He's always available to help us. For every temptation, there is always a way of escape. There is no temptation that does not have a way of escape. If you have been tempted, the law will definitely create a way of escape for you if you are sensitive. After all, Joseph is not start dragging the matter with the Potiphar's wife. He willingly released the garment that he has already laid hold on. He knew that that garment can implicate him, but he was not mindful of what men will say. He was mindful of what God will say because if he was waiting to collect the garment, the, th the woman will catch him up and he will fall into that thing. But he was not bothered about himself. He was bothered about what will God say if I do this thing. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let us be sensitive. Trust no man. Especially young ladies that are not engaged they are still young, they have not married. Men there, they are hard to destroy life. Trust no man. You, you can only trust God. It is God that you can trust. When anybody is coming around, ask God that, uh, <laughs> is this enemy, a predator or, a, or someone that wants to help me or someone that wants to swallow me up? Even when he's pretending like a friend and making... I'm putting your hand, making your hand, your heart to rest assured that there is no problem. 
And physically, you cannot see any problem. But inside of you, there is no peace within you. You said this thing, there, there is a danger in this thing. But physically, you cannot sense danger. But the Lord is saying there is danger. You need to run. So don't trust what a man is doing. When the Holy Ghost is saying, this place is not good for you. But everything around that place is saying, ah, ah, there is nothing harmful here. Hey, these, these people, they are not looking harmful. They are good. But the Holy Ghost is saying, pick your Bible or take your, your shoe and run. And you are looking at it physically and saying, ah, these men, they are gentle. They are gentlemen. They, are, they don't have issue yet. But something inside of you is saying, there is danger. Please, pick race. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So when we release our relationship to God, God is ready to help us. We can't help ourselves. But when it is released into his hand, he will help us. And we are following him. We, if we follow, there, there is nothing only, only goes we allow you. No matter what. He won't allow you to enter into it. Except you are not going to yield to it. So, God is always there for us. Let us lean on him in our relationship. He will help us. Do you understand? Let us lean on him. In your relationship, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, he said, lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Shall we rise on our feet? You know, like I said, the word of God is not meant to destroy us. But the word of God, when it's coming to us, he either helping us to come to realize that what we are doing is not right, or telling us the need to repent, to amend our ways. So talk to God. Whichever way that is yours, whether the Lord is telling you that you should amend your way, or the Lord is telling you that you have been foolish, that you should no longer be foolish any longer, as in you should not continue in that foolishness, that you should go back from your foolishness, like Tamar did. But you know the difference now is that we have Jesus, who has paid for us, who can rewrite our story. Even you, if you have a dirty story, Jesus is there if you run to him. He's going to rewrite your story. Talk to God. If God is saying that you should repent, repent. If God is saying you should amend your way, amend your way. So I want you to talk to God and say, God, help me. If you have missed it, tell God that, God, I have missed it. I need you to rescue me. If, if it is about God rescue you from one relationship or ungodly relationship that you have found yourself, that you have get yourself involved, and a lot of issues is going on there already that does not glorify God, Talk God and say, God, talk to God and say, God, help me, deliver me from this. Or you are the one that you have been exchanging your, your nudes to opposite say you have been doing all sorts of silly things that do not glorify God. Thank God that God should have mercy upon you and forgive us and cleanse you so that your, your life will bring glory to the name of the Lord. You don't contribute even while to the society again, we are we already had enough trouble in the society that you will not join them. Thank God that God will help you. Some they have married, they have entered into the hand of a wrong man. They are suffering inside that relationship up to now. That may God help you so that you will not fall into that ditch, into that pit. That's the essence of this meeting. So that our life will be better or we have a better society so that the purpose of God, the counsel of God will be established here on head. You know where we are beginning to get it right? In the area of marriage, it is very easy for the counsel of the Lord to be executed here on head. But when people are getting it wrong in the area of marriage, it's becoming difficult for God to really execute his own agenda here in the on earth. So talk to God that God will help you in particular so that the will of God will be done in your life, in every area of your life, in your marriage, in every aspect of your life that the Holy Spirit will help you. If you have missed God, tell God that, Daddy, I am sorry. I want to retrace my step back to you. If you have been messing up in your relationship, 
Ask God for forgiveness that the blood of Jesus will cleanse you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe you're blessed with the message you just listened to. For more messages like this, kindly subscribe and follow us on all our social media platforms. YouTube, KMIM Online. Facebook, facebook.com slash KMIM Online. Telegram, KMIM.ng. To support and take part in this ministry, kindly like and share. Also, for prayer and counseling, call any of the following numbers. Plus 234-8064-259285. Plus 234-7064-371111. Plus 234-8130-902252. Visit us also on our website at kmim.ng. Thanks and God bless you. Amen.